Okay, bonding gas piping systems. Should you run it to the neutral bar of your subpanel or the ground bar of your subpanel? Well, let's get into it. Okay, it's a trick question. We do not run bond wires back to that subpanel. The bonding wires have to go back to the service, and I'll show you where it says that in the code. But it's even one step different and easier than that. The number one way listed in the code for bonding gas piping systems is the equipment grounding conductor of the circuit likely to energize it. That means if you have a fireplace or a furnace and you fed it with a 120 volt circuit, you're done. The, the ground wire of the equipment grounding conductor of that 120 volt circuit is considered the bond wire. Let me show you how to find that in the code. We're in the 23. We go to 250.104, bonding piping systems. Go down to B, other piping systems, including gas. And we go up here and it lists five ways to do it and you're allowed to do any of these ways. And what's the number one way? The equipment grounding conductor for the circuit that is likely to energize the equipment. If, for whatever reason, and I have a reason you might want to do more, I'll talk about it in a second, if you're going to do more, it goes to the service. To the service. And then there's a rule involving the grounding electrode conductor. But service, service, not to the subpanel. So this is one of those times where the people who write the code, they know what they're talking about because there's a conflict in there that doesn't make sense to me. But I'm going to follow their rules, assuming that they know more than me. And again, I, the conflict is in my brain is you're telling me I can run a branch circuit with a number 12 ground from the fireplace to the ground bar of a sub panel and it's bonded. But if I run a larger independent bond wire from the pipe to the ground bar of the sub panel, that's not considered a bond and I have to go all the way back to the service. But I'm sure they have a reason. So we're just going to follow their rules. So when would there be a time that you'd ever want to run that bond wire if the equipment grounding conductor of the circuit is sufficient for code? So when would there be a time you might end up running that independent bond wire beyond the equipment grounding conductor. I'm sure you guys can come up with a thousand ways in your brain that it could come up. I'm going to tell you the time it happened to me. So outside of the NEC, the gas manufacturing and the gas code, they're calling for bonds at different times and different types of piping need bond, different types of piping don't need bond, but none of them have made it into the NEC as of yet. Now where I live, there's one inspector for all trades. It's a building inspector. And he saw that I didn't bond my gas piping system and he wanted me to, and I knew I didn't have to. So I didn't fight with him. I said, okay. And I called the electrical state inspector, the state electrical inspector to discuss what I should do. So the state electrical inspector agreed with my interpretation and said I had met the NEC standard. But then he asked for a favor. He didn't demand. He didn't say 90.4, I can make you do whatever I want because that's not how the code works. He asked me politely to bond that for the local building inspector. Because he said, if you don't bond it, the local inspector is going to make the gas guy bond it. And now we'll have gas guys in our electrical panels being unsafe and most likely doing it wrong. So he said, as a favor to keep other trades safe, could you please bond the gas piping system per NEC outside of just the equipment grounding conductor? I said, yes, but now because of 285, 23085, my panel was a sub panel. That's how I had wired it. The panel was, the house was basically done. So I had to bring the bond wire out to my main service and not the panel in the basement. So I have a hypothetical I haven't run into yet that maybe you guys can give me the answer. I haven't really dug into it because I haven't had a reason to. And maybe the answer is obvious if you look. I just haven't done it yet. What do you do if you want to run that independent bond wire for the local inspector to be the nice guy and you're in a detached building fed with feeders and not a service? Uh, is that going to go all the way back to the service of the main building? Or is that what rules four and five about how to involve grounding electrical conductors? Is that one that'll bail you out? I'm not sure. Um, like I said, it's a hypothetical, hypothetical I haven't run into yet. Maybe you guys can give me your input on that. So, all right. Thank you very much.